going to talk a bit about my philosophy. This is definitely going to end up being a multiple video thing that is not going to be all done tonight, for sure. I believe in a higher power and I call it God. And by higher, I don't mean above, I mean more. my experience, current lifetime standing at 42, almost 43 years, everything is connected. Doesn't mean all events are connected directly, but inherently all things are connected. Everything that happens on Earth is connected by the fact that it happens on Earth. Everything that exists is connected by the fact that it exists. Everything that does not exist is not connected because it doesn't exist, but I mean the fact that it doesn't exist. Or potential imaginary hypothetical possible plausible things that are simply not manifest yet or may never manifest but are possible connected by that fact and so if there is a sum absolute unit in totem of the entire of allness then there is a commonality and that commonality for that complex of a absolute unit of allness would be conscious. I mean, look, look at what we talk about with AI and the idea that if it be, you know, you have enough, enough networking, enough information, enough power to process consciousness, kind of an inevitability, unless the universe is a complete and total simulation that we're all living in. In which case, simulated computers within the simulation wouldn't really work, or they would work in a way that implies that the universe is allowing the simulated computer to work, but shouldn't. So, barring a simulation argument, which is still a possibility, barring that, the higher power is likely the sum of all of that, which means that everything that exists is simply part of the psyche of that. Because we all contain a universe of dreams, ideas, etc., memories, a lifetime record if you know how to access it, and more than a lifetime record if you know how to access it. There is so much information available in the world and so much information available from within. It can't help but be conscious. And because of the nature of consciousness, it can't help but have pretty much everything in common with all of us. That's my interpretation of the concept of made in the image of God. What that is, how it thinks, whatever... I couldn't claim to know. But there is something more. There is something that flows along with us, leaves its own trail along with itself. And Just in general, if 
physical reality that we as humans perceive, the places, the things, the stuff, the people, are a fraction of what is present. And as each of us individually is a consciousness that specifically experiences things from a first-person perspective, every conscious being is in that same pseudo-Godhead position of that being like a simulated version, but also experiencing things from a very similar perspective. And yet at the same time, the difference being that the average conscious being on the mortal, any of us, or if there's other life elsewhere that is similar, or any other creatures on this planet that happen to be conscious enough to have that in common, and that could be all of them. We don't know. The big one, the all, the absolute unit consciousness, because of the size of it, both is and is not in a like superposition, I would assume, but it's so gargantuan that it would look like ripples, waves, maybe even cosmic filaments. That it both is is and is not aware of literally all consciousness's experiences. I don't know if it's for all time, all at once, or you know, like a line moving through a graph across time kind of thing that it experiences, I don't know. Is it all powerful? I don't really know. Seems to be quite powerful, able to do things with my reality and others. And I'm not talking about change and shit and hallucinatory kind of, I'm talking about events. And at the same time, other things happen where it's like, wow, okay, uh, what's the rationale of that? But at the same time, it's like, you know, all of the other things, the creatures, the people, they can all do things, stuff gets interrupted, people get eaten all the time. Lions attack, right? So there is a lot of mystery to the concept of what this all consciousness is what it experiences, how it does. There is a, uh, it's not a school of thought, it's a, 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 it's a definitive term that kind of describes that. And so when, when you are talking about the religional, the religional and religious aspects of like everything to do with actual like practice of a belief system, which is taught is theology. Ology meaning study, theo meaning God. Then there is the analysis of the acts, the things attributed to. That is called theosophy. And that is theo, which is God, and Sophie, which is wisdom, so the wisdom of God. And then there is another one, and this is what I'm talking about. And it's an interesting term, and it has been used, but it kind of requires some explanation for most folks because it's not a word that directly sh will necessarily make sense. So, in a similar way, we have cosmology, the study of the universe, the cosmos, the whole thing. That is, how did it form? What is it doing? What might it do in the future? Then there is not really cosmosophy, the wisdom of the cosmos. I mean, there, there is a certain philosophy and, and poetry, Richard Feynman certainly, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson tries, this, this whole, you know, it's, it's like your rock star physics kind of thing, but like for a cosmic level. I guess that's where you get into your weird like space consciousness, quantum, crystal woo shit or whatever, vibrational whatever, 
that that could be you know a lot of that stuff has some merit um, conceptually, and the other things that are real real are not like literal things. Like you don't have these like medallion areas in your body called chakras, but you have these symbolic places in your pranic tunnel or the the inner sense of self that your mind possesses that can resemble that which is how they described it, which is how this concept came to be. It's not like somebody made it up and people were like, oh, I see it, I believe it. No. So anyways, that I guess would be cosmosophy, would be the personal connection to the all in a more scientific fashion, which at this point, there is no known, at least, to us at this time. You see how that works with science. Never such a thing as 100%. You can't even say almost never. It's like, oh no, oh no. But the cosmosophy is like, and really, cosmology is more the study of the universe. This is things like the expansion of space time and many of the things in it, which then includes things like astrophysics, which then includes physics, chemistry, biology, etc. Um, all the way down to sociology if you really need to. Psychology. That's where you start getting into more of your cosmosophy, right? If, the, if there's a resemblance. But there's currently no known unified theory of everything. So cosmosophy is kind of grayed out or locked off to us. The, the real truth of it might be apparent, and we just don't know how to look at it. That's the the... The, the wisdom of, of the cosmos, I suppose. Then there is cosmogony. Cosmogony is the actual, like, underpinnings and formation and what came before. What is it really all about? Cosmogony is what you would consider exploring ideas like, because we have a part, an apparent particle horizon at which light fails to travel further and it's different for different frequencies so eventually they all run out there is a final all signals particle horizon at which point nothing else from outside of that will ever reach us we are beyond it and that is technically an event horizon and as such then like oh wait a minute so is our entire universe a hologram that feels like three dimensions but is two dimensionally on the surface of a an event horizon that we just don't even have the slightest clue about because we're inside it. It's really hard to see stuff like that from inside of it. There's this weird bubble at the center of where our sun is, and supposedly we didn't cause it, but there's not a lot of signs of major supernova activity and any of that crazy, wild, crab nebula shit you're used to seeing because you can't see it from the inside. And we have to look at it in special spectra, and all we can see at those special spectra is like cosmic radiation. So cosmogony is an attempt to understand and view it from the inside, but as the outside. The real whole of it. The creation of it, is there a purpose to it? And that's where it ties into religion. Questions. Cosmogony is questions. So cosmogony, we're going to take and transmogrify this word. We're going to remove cosm, we're going to add theo, theogony. And this becomes, what is the motivation? What is in the mind of God? What is it like? How superpositional is it? Is it something where there is a size at which causality actually takes a second to work in that too? Or is this a truly paradoxically, ultimately unified and actually almighty singular consciousness that we're all just a bunch of weird little part of it that's not complete so nothing we think or say or do matters until the all that's the agony as far as I know um, individually everybody's experience is their own many people's are different many people's are the same we have many things in common and we all differ slightly it's part of my belief that the experience of this all consciousness is basically 
a series of dreams or dreamlike experiences where they are touching everyone's life. That, that entity touches everyone's life. One point or another, moving through, and it's like, oh, God passed through or whatever. God was dreaming about you. And it's not like, oh, God's asleep. Oops. What's it supposed to do, be awake? That would be nonstop suffering and unfunctional to boot. As far as I can tell, that's the thing. There's, as much as we have to try and cope and, and quest for things in, in what we call real life, the waking mortal living world or whatever, assuming this isn't also a dream, I'm not saying I can't tell the difference. I'm saying from a philosophical standpoint. If you've ever died in a dream, you understand. So, the experience of, of full wakefulness for that entity would be not good. At least not at any long period of time. So, likely, its natural state would be in this dreaming position of being in better contact with all things. When we go to sleep and have any kind of dreams, if you ever see an archetype, if you're ever just, your brain generates a person and you're not sure if you've ever met them before, it's just a person, a lot of this is generated from your own experience and a lot of it is generated from some mysterious sources that appear to be a collective thing because a lot of other people describe the same thing independently. But in order for us to experience that as mortals, we have to feed the head and the body, which is why we have the waking time. Would this be the homogeny, the wise of, of humans? I know it's funny because of, you know, homogeneity. You homogenize the milk, you heat it up, you de-diseaseify it from boiling nearly and then you whip it back into a single liquid with no separate components. So really, you get down to it, we are all connected, all effectively the same, though all also slightly unique. Even if we also kind of repeat and echo other things, every one of us here and there makes a unique decision. And the entirety of the experience is contained within an all-being that is both dreaming as us and dreaming of us. And I believe it's these moments of closeness in that sense that this all-being is either walking beside you or protecting you or something who knows there's there's wrath and punishment too lord knows i know what i'm getting at is that the it's that is the connectedness and the experience that's, that's how I, I view life. That's how I notice things. You get chills in your spine sometimes. Uh, just a, a sudden urge and it is not a weirdo fucking kind of fucking intrusive idea. It's like a, hey, wait, this could benefit someone. So I, I'm able to take a lot from kind of contemporary religions and that as far as you know the ideas of a higher power and it affects everyone's daily life whether they realize it or not and maybe the complete absence of some people is that they're just not being dreamed about because it's like I had a period of extreme poverty where I could tell that I was walking side by side almost in lockstep and for an extended period
As far as the mortal lifetime goes, I am personally in favor of liberty. I recognize there is kind of a need sometimes for a bit of authority. It helps kind of keep society uh, enmeshed, if that's how we must live. But I believe that the society should also allow people who wish to separate and live on their own to do so. And at this time, the culture does not allow that. The culture is one of authoritarianism and manipulation. If you watch some of my other videos, you've heard me talk some other stuff, and, and I would describe myself not as an extremist per se, so much as more a patriot, a person who loves the place they live in, and who also appreciates the rights and liberties of others, because that is the way it is here. And I don't just say that because that's the way it is here, but there's reasons to believe it. There's a better balance to me to be made when people are able to decide for themselves. Although again, sometimes it does help to have a little bit of some type of authority, but it is such a dangerous line to cross. It would be nicer if people were just better able through the collective to digest and figure out ways to be better. So that's going to conclude it for this one. Um, I felt that that part of it, the first bit there, that long part was more important to get to before anything else. Um, this will upload at some point whenever I am at a place with good signal and not having to be on the charger and the forethought to actually upload the video. Thank you.